Love is in the air as Maureen is getting ready for her first date with Daniel. Today I'm going to go see Daniel and I am so excited. Maureen and I have been talking on the phone every day. Our feelings are getting pretty serious. Danny knows Maureen wants to leave the Amish community just to be with him. I don't think she would even consider leaving if it weren't for her crush on me. I've had a crush on him for years. But he's not sure he wants Maureen to leave her family and life as she's known it. She's a really respected girl in the Amish community. And I don't want her to lose her family. I just don't want that to happen. The lovebirds meet at a park for a picnic prepared by Danny's mom. My mom made us these sandwiches here. Who's yours? <laughs> Maureen is tickled pink as Danny hits all the right spots when he pulls out her favorite. I hope you like ham and cheese sandwiches. A ham and cheese sandwich, y'all. Ham is my favorite. That's good. I'm ready to take the next step in our relationship. <laughs> While we're not quite sure what exactly is so funny, I'm so happy. Maureen admits this is the first time she's ever been alone with a boy. This is the first time I've been alone with a boy. Danny brings out the big guns, popping bottles of sparkling cider. Cheers. While Maureen lets her heart take the lead. Can I tell you something? No. Admitting to Danny she wants to be with him forever. Danny and his man parts have other plans for the evening. So, thank you for ending more convinced group. He invites Maureen to come on over. He's gonna try and get me to sleep at his house and have sex with me. But Maureen's not that easy. I really want to stick with my Amish values, but Danny, he is so handsome. She agrees to hang out for a bit, but she's sleeping at Grandma's house. <laughs> Things begin to heat up, leading to an official declaration that the pair are exclusive. So my Tessa's boyfriend and girlfriend? Yeah, I guess so. Then, Danny and Maureen seal the deal. My heart starts racing because I've never been kissed before. With a kiss. We had our first kiss. As we watch, somewhat mystified, at times mortified, we learn live and in living color the Amish idea of an English kiss. That was an English kiss. Commonly known as making out, Maureen gave the kiss and herself a solid 10. I feel I'm pretty good at English kissing. And while it maybe made you sick, she proclaimed Danny to be top quality when it comes to the kissing game. I don't know if I can wait till marriage. Danny is an amazing kisser. This nearly took me out. And I felt like there was nothing else in the world. It's too much. It was just the best day of my life. We turn from the kissing chronicles to Rosanna taking out her dentures for a cleaning. I was 16 when I pulled my teeth and then I got dentures. Yes, Rosanna is a young woman of 19. A lot of Amish people get dentures in and stuff. Apparently Apparently, getting dentures is a thing in the Amish community. I went to an Amish dentist to do it. Who knew? He had to make me like three pairs before I actually fit this them. This is too much. I still don't really fit them right. I can't! Once those teeth are taken care of, it's time for a phone call. I always dreamed of having a phone, but living in the Amish, we weren't allowed to. So she got one before leaving Florida. This is a modern cell phone. And it's a good thing, because she's been able to keep in touch with Claudia from the bikini shop. Claudia is my new English friend that I met in Florida at the base and suit shop. Claudia shares with Rosanna that she's coming back to Pennsylvania, too. The coronavirus is starting to get pretty bad here in Florida. I'm going back to Pennsylvania tomorrow. The pair set a date to meet up with Claudia's friends. You like Trampoline and hit the trampolines. I have the perfect place for us to hang out. It's really exciting to have English friends and like go out and do stuff with them. The big day is here, and Claudia introduces the girls and Danny to her group of friends. Rosanna is caught up in the moment. I'm so excited to hang out with Claudia. She's having her dream of having English friends finally come to life. It's always wanted to hang out with English girls. Rosanna lights up when she sees Claudia. Nick is Claudia's friend and he's clearly flirting with Rosanna. He takes Rosanna aside for a one-on-one -on -one chat to get to know her better. Let's go get a drink. Yeah. Let's go. He's intrigued by her bravery. I've never really met anyone like you before. It's so crazy to me. And asks Rosanna on a date. I think it's super brave of you. Do you want to go out sometime? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, I'm not looking to. Rosanna says, okay. Okay, yeah. But makes it clear. I'm not looking to get married. She does not want to be married. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not saying get married or anything. After either. Nick assures her that's not where he's going with this. I'm still in school right now and I'm 21. He reaches out to hold her hand. It's so brave of you to be able to step out of your comfort zone and do something like uh -huh. that. And, well, this is kind of awkward. Seriously. 
Uh, thank you. You'd think Rosanna would be interested, right? He's a nice looking guy, but more importantly, he seems really genuinely interested in her. You ready to go back and jump? All right, let's go. The two head back to join the rest of the group, where Rosanna continues to jump her way to joy. One, two, two. three. It's been a great day. I had so much fun tonight. Rosanna says if she had to change any part of it, it would be her clothes. The only thing that made me feel different was my clothes. And I don't want to feel different anymore. Stay tuned. In this episode, Rosanna goes on her first date ever. Today I have a date with Nick and I'm so excited. Not only is this a first date, I haven't told Nick this. She's also never been alone with a guy before. But I was never alone with a boy before. In the Amish community, we are not allowed to be with a boy alone. Nick swings by to pick Rosanna up. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Nick picked me up to play miniature golf and learn her how to play some mini golf. I never really played it, but he said he'll learn me how to play. I hope you know I'm about to be very competitive. Oh, yeah? The date is going well. There you go. Perfect. However, Rosanna is on to Nick. Awesome. I think you're beating me on this hole. And his lackluster golfing skills. I'm trying to impress you with my golf skills, but I don't think it's working very well. She's convinced he's playing the loser for the bigger win. Mm -hmm. Too powerful. You got those big muscles. Her affection. I think that was like the way he let me win so he can tell me how amazing I am. So how does dating work for you guys? In the middle of the date, we suddenly hear some weirdo making fun of Rosanna. <laughs> Throwing a shady comment about her dress. Grow up, dude. <laughs> Nick is quick and not here for the bullshit. You're a big tough guy. Nice. Rosanna, bless her soul. Nick is really jealous. She thinks they complimented her. Someone told me they like my dress and he flipped out on him. Wow. That guy's just a stupid jerk. I don't care. Ignorance <laughs> is truly bliss. A beautiful, beautiful shot. Thank not you. as beautiful as you, but a beautiful shot. <laughs> Meanwhile, Nick continues to lay it on thick. Oh, look, our balls are kissing. <laughs> Wait. Maybe that's a sign. What? I don't think so. No? No. Oh. No, Nick. Sometimes these lines work on English girls. Hell to every no, Nick. This is awkward. That is most certainly not a line you want to use to seal the deal, honey. Hey, there we go. You'd think he'd reel it in a bit. You really are so pretty, though. But no. Oh, thank you. Nick's a man who won't quit. Can I give you a kiss? No. And he straight up balls to the walls, asks Rosanna for a kiss. Yeah, no. After that, Rosanna checks out. I did have fun, but he was trying too hard think to turn me on or something. She's done. Our balls are kissing. Finish. Can I kiss you? You're so pretty. Vowing never to hang out with Nick alone again. Look, I'm sorry. I really am. Bishop always said that guys are only after sex, and I think he was right. Up next, Rosanna joins Marine for a night of backyard camping, allegedly. Marine and I told Ada that we're going to go outside and camp in the yard tonight. Marine has other plans. Tonight, I'm going to go see Daniel, and I'm camping because it's easier to sneak out because Grandma's room is right across the hallway and she would catch me. She sneaks out to meet Danny for a night of another first. Me to let's do. She's willing to give in to her man and sacrifice her virginity for him. Completely meeting, sir. I'm a virgin and I take that very seriously, but I love Danny so much. I finally feel like I found the one. Danny breaks down why he's in love with Maureen. Maureen's really smart. I mean, she don't take her long to figure stuff out. And he's doing well until he says she's got all her teeth, which is like <laughs> Say what? Something very rare under the Amish. He's excited to have his new girlfriend over, ready to break her out. Wait, it says break her in. I'm nervous, but I trust Danny, so I'm ready to take the next step in our relationship. Oh. Uh. Rosanna and Sabrina are wide awake at 5 a.m. I'm always up early with the baby, but this morning Rosanna was up early too. Waiting for Maureen to come in and spill the tea, honey. She thinks Maureen must have lost her virginity. We decided to wait up and make sure that Maureen doesn't try to sneak back into the house without going past us. But when she arrives, she's clearly in no condition to do anything of the sort. Yo! Push your ass over here, Maureen. Looks like she got mowed over. Maureen, <laughs> damn. She, she had a rough night, you can see that. Well, we know you had sex, so you might as well tell us how it went. <laughs> Maureen sets these ladies straight. Why are you guys still up? You need to be in bed right now. Seems like you just got out of bed, man. Telling them to basically mind their damn business. You guys are asking way too many questions. You don't ask anyone about their sex life. That's personal. Rosanna is clearly pissed about the whole thing. You're terrible. <laughs> are you jealous? Hell no. I hope you use protection. 
But Maureen refuses through giggles and flushed cheeks to English kiss and tell. Was this your first time? It's none of your business. Damn, you guys are nosy. After more questions, Maureen weakens, spilling tea and tips. Yes, I did have sex and it was great. Did you use protection? Absolutely. On how to prevent pregnancy. I did the traditional Amish way. I jumped up and down 20 times. You did jumping jacks after you had sex? Yes, 20 times. That's right, folks. According to popular Amish belief, doing 20 jumping jacks after intercourse prevents pregnancy. Maureen is a community school teacher, and that's what she's teaching the class. You know what? I absolutely cannot with this today. Did you ever strike a match and lit a propane lamp? Because that's how it felt. We got Rosanna mad at a guy because he asked her to kiss. Can I give you a kiss? And never wants to see him again. He turned me off in every way. We've got Maureen using jumping jacks as contraception. Don't say this stuff around. She's a baby. I think we're done here, folks. This is the dumbest conversation I ever had. <laughs> okay, we're not done yet. As soon as like, I'm going to bed. Three hours later. Maureen joins the ladies in the kitchen. How's your vagina doing this morning? <laughs> glowing like a beacon of light. I don't want to talk about it. The girl is on fire, y'all. I can't pee because it burns. Do you, does your stomach hurt? Not like it did last night. Burns. Danny has left our sweet, naive Maureen itching and burning. Is it normal for it to itch and... Itch? <laughs> Are you serious? No, it's not supposed to itch. Ada enters the conversation and lets Maureen know she's on to her. She was out till 3 o'clock this morning with Danny, and I want to know what she was doing. And not at all happy with her granddaughter. Apparently Danny made her itchy. It's, and it's sore. Itchy. Don't talk like that to your grandma or in front of her. But also doesn't want to talk about it. Yep. Not to worry. I don't want to talk about it. That's my granddaughter. You can ask me. Sabrina steps up and gives the girls a quickie. If you're going to do it, put a condom on it. You guessed it. A lesson on safe sex. She's only 19 years old. She shouldn't be out there having sex. Well, I didn't tell her to go have sex. She did it already, so I'm just trying to help her. Ada is typical Amish. If you don't talk about it, it ain't true. And the dangers of STDs. You didn't do anything wrong, just wrap it. And make sure he's clean. We open with the girls playing in the garden. Green told me, Danny. It's just a small. Rosanna, no, I did not. It's a good day for the ladies as decision time is quickly approaching. Summer's coming to an end. Rosanna and I really need to decide if we're going back Amish or go English. This is the hardest decision I've ever made because I love my family, my community, and my job. Maureen admits if it wasn't for Danny, she'd go home. If it wouldn't be for Danny, I wouldn't leave. She also worries that she's not fit to become a teacher in the English world. To make it in the English world, Rosanna and I need to get a GED. As for Rosanna, she's not quite keen on the idea of her worthiness. I'm not sure if I can be English because I don't even know if I'll be able to fit in. Or confidence in herself. All my life I was told I'm only good enough to be a wife and a mother. Despite being very certain that she's what the English would call a feminist. I'm what the English would call a feminist. I can take care of my own self. Maureen says she's worried about Rosanna and how uneducated she Rosanna is. Rosanna is so uneducated. I'm worried about her. Maureen, who just told everyone on national TV. Did you use protection? Absolutely. I jumped up and down 20 times. But she got busy and then did 20 jumping jacks to ward off possible pregnancy. Yes, 20 times. Queen of deflection. I'm honey. excited for this because I love school and I've always wanted more education. After careful consideration, the girls agree to get their GED. Today we're going to go get our GED assessment to see how an Amish education is compared to an English education. Time to assess the mess. I'm really nervous because I think it's very important to get my GED so I can survive in the English world. First, the ladies make their way to meet with a private GED tutor to have their current education level served. I was a teacher, so... Maureen's ego is still on overdrive. For Rosanna's sake, I'm going to try and help her as much as I can. The tutor asks the girls a few simple questions. What subjects did you study? Math and spelling and history. And so you didn't have science? Chemistry or... No, no. they didn't think it was necessary. What about space, if I said space? We just don't do science and we read about the stars and the moon and the Bible. How about U.S. history? Can you think of a historical event of any kind? Anything that happened before today in our country? Before today? Does the name George Washington mean anything to you? I know, I was Amish. I didn't really know. You didn't, stuff. okay. My God. It's hard to watch, friends. I was first president. He was our first president. Correct. 
The tutor is actually amazing. She's not at all condescending, okay. but you can see she is about to work for every dime she earns on this. I don't even remember if I learned that in school. Okay. Up next, it's time to read. Maureen, I'd like you to just read the first sentence of the first paragraph. Maureen panics, and she, of course, has a reason for not reading aloud. I can read it to myself, but I can't read it out loud. She manages to not read any lines on camera. I'm a school teacher for Pete's sake. Rosanna, who she was worried about, at least tries. There appear to have been contra 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 contradictory. I'm not good with the same words. That's okay. The whole scene is yet another uncomfortable moment, quite frankly. I was in the chatter of the League of Robin Hood. The tutor asks for a moment to finalize her assessment. I need a few minutes if you guys don't mind just going out into the hall. In the end, Maureen gets assessed to be at a 7th grade level, while Rosanna gets graded in at a 4th grade level of education. Yeah, they can clean the house. Beyond that, it's going to be tough. Maureen is pissed. I am ticked off that it's seventh grade instead of eighth grade because I went through first through eighth grade. <laughs> My goodness. I'm starting to get worried that I won't be able to live in the English world. Yeah, this was hard to watch. As an act of rebellion, the duo decide to do what any teenager would do after skipping school. We're not happy when we left the GED because we found out how far behind we are. So we are going to go do something crazy. We're going to go get piercings. Because, duh, that'll help to blow off some steam, right? Can I help you guys with anything? The Amish don't get their ears pierced or anything pierced because they say it's a sin and you can't go to heaven if you have piercings. You've got nipple piercings, you know, something down here. Uh, no. Not no. For After some discussion, Maureen set on getting her ears pierced. Why would people even want to get some of those piercings? Like, you, Gross. I bet Daniel would like that. No way. <laughs> and Rosanna's more than a little brave with her decision. Decision. I'm gonna get my belly button pierced because I don't want anyone to see it, especially if I go see my parents. The anticipation is worse than the actual piercing. Does it hurt really bad? I mean, no, they're all gonna hurt a little bit just for a second, you know, beauty's pain. I just get nervous on you. Yeah. Nevertheless, Maureen is picked as the first victim of the day, and she lays down to brace herself for the needle. I can't do this. I can't watch you. Meanwhile, Rosanna's anxiety is getting the best of her. I feel really dizzy right now. I feel like I could have out. My eyes feel like they're falling closed or something. Wow. Well, that was not bad at all. Now it's Rosanna's turn. <laughs> Believing that the pain is going to be comparable to delivering a baby? This is probably how women feel just before they give birth. Listen, Rosanna, I can tell you from experience, this ain't that. It's not that bad, I promise. Once it's over, you're gonna be like, that's not like giving birth at all. Rosanna pushes through like she always does. Definitely a little fidgety, um, very, very nervous. And we watch, hoping they don't have to call the EMTs again. She was so scared. I thought she was going to pass out. And ah! Ah! we're done. <laughs> it's okay, Rose. Careful. Maureen reminds her friend of the good old English adage, beauty is pain. She needs to toughen up a little bit. Was it that bad as, as bad as you thought it would be? Yeah, it was. Belly button piercings are painful. Are you okay? I just feel dizzy. People told me, like, it doesn't hurt or anything. Well, that was a bunch of it did hurt. But Rosanna's content with her decision. Do you like how it looks? Yeah. I'm glad I got my belly button pierced. I really like it. At Danny's apartment, the new couple are cooking up some breakfast. You want spinach or something or just eggs and bacon bits and cheese? But something's a little off with Marie. I'm very happy with Daniel, but I don't know what to do. She's about to make her final decision on whether to go fully English or stay Amish in her comfortable existence. If I go English, I could be shunned and I won't ever be able to see my family again. Well, Maureen, you've gone all in at this point. Your jumping jack game from the look of Danny's unkempt appearance is strong. What's the matter? Don't you like the eggs? What do you have to lose at this point? Just, I don't think that I can leave the Amish. I probably won't be able to see my family ever again. And what am I going to do out here? I don't know anyone. How am I going to be able to get a job? Ah, but wait an Amish minute, folks. This young man stepped his game all the way up. I can understand all that, but I felt the same way when I left. It took my family nearly two years to adjust to it. When he makes Maureen an offer. Oh, what if I make you a deal? She can't refuse. If 
you come to stay with me for a year and you don't like it, I'll go back on this with you. <laughs> you hit the jackpot, mommy. You would really do that for me. This man is all in and I see you winning, winning, winning. Knowing that he's by my side no matter what gives me the courage to tell my parents that I want to go English. I'll do anything for you. Well played, Daniel. You get yourself some Old Spice and a good oral surgeon and you'll be in business, honey. It's time for the girls to experience the glory of a grocery store. Rosetta, look, there's cucumbers. Look, they're already cut. Maureen is a little too judgmental for her own good. I can't believe that the English people buy vegetables that are already cut and cleaned. They're ready to eat. That is so lazy. Why wouldn't you just do it yourself? How dare English people buy clean cut, ready to eat veggies? Holy crap, $5.99. And how crazy is it to buy eggs? I wouldn't want to pay that much for eggs. I just get chickens. You people just need to get a chicken for eggs, a cow for milk. Look at it. Why wouldn't you just get a cow and milk the cow? It's made with almonds. How can you make milk with almonds? Maureen leaves the dairy section, assuring us. There is no milk in almonds. You tell them, Maureen. What Whatever. The ladies then decide to browse the magazine aisle. You ever see like Jennifer Lopez? It is here we discover Rosanna does know some history after all. I like uh, Prince William. She knows who the royal family is. I that's like a guy. Her. No, that's a woman. His wife. And according to her bishop, they are all evil. I know who the royal family is. My bishop said they are very sinful. Because England has replaced God with the royals. They have replaced God with a family. Rosanna doesn't care. But I love Kate. That's right, Rosanna. God said to love everyone. She's so yeah, pretty. She is pretty. The girls fawn over the latest fashions. I'm not allowed to look at magazines. Knowing it is forbidden. They can Consider it main. I think they're afraid if we look at the magazines, we're going to want to leave the Amish. However, the girls decide it's time for an English makeover. We should do something like this, like dress like they do um, in I'm these going magazines. I just want to look like Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, let's get them. Something exciting happened at the grocery store today. Rosanna and I decided to get our English makeover. Before the makeover, the girls know it's time to break the news to their parents. I'm really nervous to tell my parents because I don't know like how they're going to react to it. Both their hearts are set on going English. I know my mom's going to be mad. They risk losing their parents for life. Are they going to ever like let me come home again? By giving up the restrictive Amish lifestyle. It's my decision and I'm going to do it. Nobody wants to be alone. It's it's a big decision, but I love Danny. I know where my heart is leading me, and I know God is going to be with me. Maureen makes her way home to share her news. I'm going to go tell my parents that I've decided to leave the Amish, and I'm very nervous about it. I'm afraid they won't accept the decision I made. I won't have any family or friends. I her mom and stepfather are concerned about their status in the community. Her mom goes one step further, comparing Maureen to her biological father. Congratulations, this is your biological father. Who we discover left her to go English. My biological father and mother were together, and my mom got pregnant at 16. When she told my dad that she's pregnant, he left the Amish. Maureen's left feeling horrible after being compared to someone who clearly caused her mother and her so much heartbreak. At me, Following the advice of her stepfather, Maureen leaves the house peacefully. Albeit heavy hearted. It hurts that my family, they don't want to see me if I'm not Amish. Right now, I feel like they will never accept me, but still my family. Next, it's Rosanna's turn. Rosanna first approaches her brother to talk about the movie. Hey. Hello. How you doing? Uh, pretty good. Like, you gave me freedom. He's worried and cautious. You still realize you know, what the price is. But still supportive of her choice. I finish an ice cooker for the EVH. Yeah, EVH is an ice cooker fish for me. Even sharing, he's thought of leaving as well. You probably shouldn't think of it like that. You might have that price on this fish. He's right that my parents couldn't make it with, without one of us. But at the same time, as an Amish man, he would have a lot more freedom in the community than I would have. Rosanna takes off to speak to mom next. So who's your mom? I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, Thank God for her family. I mean, the right to say your mom. They appear to be more receptive to the idea of keeping in touch with her. 
So each day after I need him come over and he help us. That's why I rap. That was so refreshing to see. I was so relieved because some parents like don't have anything to do with their children. Like they wouldn't let them come home or anything. Back at Ada's, Maureen is dealing with the repercussions of her decision. Losing her mom reminded her of the rejection she felt by her biological dad as a child. Maureen's real dad up and left, and he didn't take no responsibility for his actions. He has nothing to do with Maureen, which is very, very sad. This scene, y'all, had me undone. The tears were just flowing. Nothing is more important to me in my life than Maureen. I raised Maureen till she was three years old because her mom had her when she was 17 years old. Maureen is very blessed to have her in her life. In the Amish, we don't show emotions, but when it comes to Maureen, her pain is my pain. <laughs> Maureen also seeks comfort in the presence of someone familiar. What did they say? They didn't accept it. Once again, Danny knows exactly what to say. They'll come around to it. But what if they don't? And you keep seeing what I do every day. This my family. Aw, he's such a charmer. In the end, Maureen reiterates her commitment to going English and to Danny. I'm finally doing what I've been wanting to do for so long. I'm ready to go entirely English. It's makeover time. Now that Rosanna and I decided to go English, we're getting our English makeover. Rosanna shares that she and Maureen are going to surprise each another with their new looks. We have to go get our makeovers. We're going to surprise each another. Hi. Barbara Shindu. Both girls say they are ready, ready, ready to go English. But if you're lucky in makeover, Gria. Well, when I'm here, I'm Gria, so I'll be all the Maureen gets Ada to come with her. Napa must meet me, Gia. I love Grandma. I want her to help with my makeover. Ada agrees. Okay, when shall you supposed to be it? Yay! <laughs> Only if she approves of the final looks. I've been posed for responsible side for the Gashne, you should any help us to cost you the Gashne to respect wise. Well, let's do that. Girl, Girls really want to surprise everyone with their makeover. Ada decides to have a makeover reveal party. Well, I'm going to have a big dinner for everybody. Celebrate the girls' next chapter. Tonight, I really hope that Danny thinks I'm beautiful. Rosanna calls up her new bestie, Claudia, for help putting together her new look. People can see who I really am in this dress. I'm never going to fit into English until I look like they do. Claudia introduces Rosanna to a professional makeup artist. Chelsea actually owns her own like salon where she does professional makeup and hair for like brides and everyone. And her friend that's got an eye for fashion. Celia has the best clothes, so I was like, okay, I think that we can definitely like make something happen with Rosanna today. As usual, these ladies want to know the tea on Amish living. I told them a little about you, but tell them more. Rosanna, however, is over the questions. We have to like wear like a dress mm -hmm. and a cap like every day. And mm -hmm. longs for some English normalcy. I just want to fit in when I'm with the English. I don't want to always have to like explain to people how the Amish life is and everything. With more focus on who she's becoming. And just talk about what everyone else talks about. Like, tell them about your date with Nick. The conversation switches to Nick. Yay. Oh my god, tell us. Yeah, we went out, but he was <laughs> really weird. <laughs> yes. Can I give you a kiss? No. Kissing balls, Nick. Oh look, our balls are kissing. Maybe that's a sign. Just the way he <laughs> talked to me and stuff, like, it was so awkward, and then he asked me if he can kiss me. <gasps> and I was like, no. Like, <laughs> yeah. quickly returns to the task at hand. Do you like your nails? Oh my god. Gosh, yeah, I really like it. And Rosanna 2.0 begins to emerge right before our eyes. You already look like you're glowing. Look at you. <laughs> so pretty. Can I just peek myself? No. <laughs> Maureen opts to go shopping for her makeover with Ada. I am really nervous that I'm not going to look good in English clothes. I feel like I'm going to look like a muffin. Maureen is super self-conscious about her weight. I'm just going to look so fat. This store has a lot to choose from, and it's just, like, overwhelming. I have fitting room, so you can go through it. But she pushes through the angle. Of it all. Maureen, are you ready? Come on. Ada gives an absolute no to look number one. Uh, Maureen, no. It, it, it's just. She says it's too short. It's way too short. But then she opts for another short number that Maureen ends up trying on as the winner. Oh, you look awesome. You're beautiful. Are we happy with this one? Yeah, she's beautiful. I really like that dress. It was very odd. Damn, you're hot. <laughs> Grandma. Our little woman is all grown up and ready to bring it on. <laughs> For what will be her first time in English clothes, oh my God. look at all of these options. So many dresses. Rosanna picks an outfit to wear. I like this one. That I like the one. one. Are you ready? Two, three. Wow. <gasps> oh 
Oh my god. She looks amazing. I almost forgot she was Amish for a second. So good. Yeah, I really love her. Beautiful. It complements her makeup so well. Yeah. When she lays her eyes on the mirror for the first time, wow. She's more than pleased. I guess I'm officially English now. Glowing like a newborn English, our English princess is ready to take on the world. I'm really happy Rosanna has gone full English. It's what she's been wanting to do for a really long time, so I'm happy to be seeing her finally like be happy and comfortable in her own skin. And it's time for these ladies to hit the backyard runway for Ada's big reveal party. I hope the rest of my friends that are going to be at the party tonight think I look great. I feel like an English princess. <laughs> Lights, camera, action, darling. I'm really looking forward how the others react when they see Maureen and Rosanna's makeover. I have a big surprise for you guys. What's that? And word on the street for contestant number one, Rosanna. I'm just really nervous. I to show everyone my new look. Oh, wow. Look who showed up. Is that she looks hot. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Looking completely wow. different. beautiful. She went from little girl to a beautiful woman. After a little prodding from the fans. Come on, show us the hiney. Go spin. <laughs> Rosanna gives us an awkward twirl. Did you get a <clears throat> hair removal? You know, with a slight introduction to poise, shaving cream, and how to use those feminine wiles. Nobody can spoil a good moment like you can. Dude, I wouldn't be a good friend if I didn't ask her. Rosanna will be ready for Freddie, Tom, Nick, and Dick. Bold as this. Up next, contestant number two. I'm waiting on my big entrance. I really hope that Danny thinks I'm beautiful. Green, come to right. It's our favorite seventh grader. I want everyone to be stunned. Wow. Oh. Maureen hits the grassy knoll, and in the words of Florida Evans from Good Times, down, down, down. that's what Danny said too. I mean, she did look good, y'all. Maureen looked like a completely different person. If I'd have met her on the street, I'd have never recognized her. Body yaddy 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 for days. Yaddy, 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 yaddy. I don't feel like myself. Some folks like meat on their bones, Maureen. Feel like a new girl. It's the new you. I hope she will come to embrace her beauty, cause baby, she's a looker. Maureen was a little bit more shy and unsure of herself, but regardless, she was just stunning. Maureen might seem giddy on the outside, but she admits she's not fully comfortable with the change. It's nice to be noticed, but I'm going to be honest. I don't feel very comfortable. It doesn't feel like me. Danny, however, is very comfortable. In fact, he looks like he wants to devour Maureen right here, right now. She looks so beautiful. She's extremely hot. To everyone's surprise, Danny gets down on one knee to pop the question. Will you marry me? Yes. Without hesitation, yeah. Maureen says yes. <laughs> I've loved Daniel since the first day I laid eyes on him. I love you too. Congratulations. It's a wrap. Thank you. Make sure to click here for part two on Return to Amish Favorite Moments. This time, we take on Rosanna. Until next time, make sure to subscribe to keep up to date with The Strange List.